there. This is Mia from Mima Design Laser Files and today I'll show you how to make these beautiful 3D layered magnolias. I'll be painting this exclusively with watercolor that I got from our local hardware store, sorry supermarket. Um, these are kids watercolor so it's not a special brand or anything like that just some cheap watercolor that I found around Sicily where I'm stationed at so <clears throat> here's how it looks directly after cutting but I want to round it just a tiny bit I pre-sanded my uh, wood this is poplar plywood but you can use any, you can use MDF, you can use uh, birch, plywood, you can use anything. Um, this is four millimeter. So what I want to do, I have these sanding sponges, you might call them. Uh, you could use regular sandpaper as well, but I can't find mine currently. So what I want to do is just lightly rub over the edges <clears throat> this way i'm not only removing my residue i'm also rounded rounding it just a tiny bit you don't have to do this but it does make it a little more pretty and uh, realistic looking also, you could use a Dremel or a shaping tool of some sort and make it way more shaped than I'm doing now. You could see on this box that I made, I did the same procedure with this one. And this one is also painted with watercolor. So I'll speed up the video, I'll, I do these edges and then I'll get back to you and we can get on with the painting. Okay, so once you've uh, rounded and sanded your pieces a bit, it will look something like this. You can sand it more, you can skip it entirely, that's up to you. If you want to use these, uh, what do you call them, sanding sponges, this one is a grid 320, I believe it's very fine. And this is a bit more rough, I think it's 240 or something. So what I did, if you missed it, is that I sand it downwards and I use the fine course in the end to make it smooth. So now that my pieces are smoothened down, uh, I want to assemble them again <clears throat> just to see if there is something that I might want to sand better, especially where they connect and are assembled, I want to make a little more detailed. So I'll give this a little more. And this entire sanding process only took 10 minutes. So it's not a bunch of work, but these small details does make a huge difference in my opinion but if you want to skip it you can do that and you can just paint it as is so that's better also you can feel it with your finger I want to feel that they are connecting. I 
And this floral piece I'm doing right now is for a sign, motivational sign that I'm building for myself. So this is for me, so I'm probably not put as much work into it as I would if I was actually selling it. But I still want it to look nice because it's something that I'll be looking at every single day. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. So once you've sanded, it's time to start painting. I'll just wipe off this dust. And as I said, I'll be using watercolor. This one is from a brand called Primo. It's from a supermarket. This one is from Flying Tiger Copenhagen. Also a very cheap watercolor. Um, I think this one is better at covering than the other one. So I'll maybe start with this. And I can always add some more colors from the other one. So put the leaves aside and determine what color you want your flowers to be. Um, I want these to be pink and purple. It's two of my favorite colors. So I'll take some water and a brush. These are also just cheap brushes. So not anything special about them, but I'll take some pink and this is very dark pink. So I'll mix just a tiny bit of white in it. And I always start with the bottom piece because I can do the color test on the inner part. This would be hidden anyway. And now I can get on with the painting. And the great thing about watercolor is that if you make it too dark, you can go over with a lighter color. If you make it too light, you can go over with a darker color. So you can mix and match them and you can make this natural kind of shading. So I'll paint this and again, I'll speed up the video just a tiny bit. So you don't have to watch me doing this for half an hour. So I just did the base color, um, the pink magnolia. And it's time to fill in some shades and shadows. So for shades, I'll use my white. And I'll take the bottom part. It dries pretty fast. So you can just take it directly. And I'll just kind of add some white to the edges and around the scored stripes. If you want, you could take a picture of an actual magnolia to see how the shadows kind of falls and looks like, but I'm just doing it the best I can and the way I think it looks pretty. So, and since this was poplar plywood, uh, this sheet was a bit structured, so I can still see the wood structure beneath. And I actually like that because it leaves <clears throat> some more details that I would have had um, in recreating. So I'll use this lighter pink, it's almost skin toned. And just go leaf by leaf. A 
and there's no wrong or right in this at all so you just do it the best you can and regardless of what you're doing i think it will look awesome So, and these are base shadows. I'll go in and add some more details once this is more dry with a finer brush. And the great thing about watercolor is that these scored marks will still be visible. So I don't know if you can see it, but I randomly placed my white. I might want to highlight just a tiny bit more somewhere, like here. And these parts that are folding over the front leaf like that and maybe go a little down on these bigger ones and I'm not at all great at painting I just do it as I feel natural. So I'm a rookie as well, so you don't have to be scared about playing around. So I'm pretty satisfied with how it looks like right now, but I'll leave it dry and then I'll see if I need to add something. I need to color the, the I don't know what you call that inner part of the flower. I'm Danish, so English is only my second language. But for the other one, I want it to be purple. So I'm doing the same. I'm taking some purple and mixing it with my white and a little bit of pink, that's okay. So I'll have this maybe too light purple. There it is. And again, I'm starting with the bottom piece because I can use this inner part as an indicator or a color mixer. And I don't know if you can see it on my water, but I'm actually not using a lot of water, just a little bit. And the more coats you give it, the better it will cover. And our electricity just went out, so if you are hearing sirens in the back, it's just that. So I think the color is pretty close to where I want it. So this will be the bottom and now to the top and I didn't say that on the other piece but be careful that you don't get too close to the center of the flower because the yellow or 
orange or whatever you're using might blend a little too much but if you get a little stuck it's okay So I think that's it. Yeah. And you can always take your flowers and pull them up against each other to see the effects and details. So for this one, I want to make some basic shadows as well. So I'll again take the white. and just kind of blend it in. So what you can do as well is use your finger and you can blend it that way. So I'll put this aside and I'll see what colors I have in my other set. And I actually think I have some that will look really pretty for shading, like this purple would be great for that one. And for this one, I might go ahead and use this. So I'll grab a smaller brush. This was the first one I used. And I'll take some of this, I think. As you see, yeah, it's darker. So since this one is layered, I want to make a shadow effect beneath it. So I'll just take some of this kind of darker color and again I'll just use my finger to kind of push it up. take the upper one to see. I actually want it a little darker. Maybe if I do this one. And I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of just taking the end of my brush and kind of tapping it. So it will make these lines. Oh, 
Also, you could use alcohol ink markers to make these details. I've used them in the past. But I just find watercolor so easy to work with. And if it dries a little bit too fast, you can just take some water on your finger and you'll be able to smudge it again. Like that. So that's way better. So the upper part I also want, but only around the inner floral part here. So I'll just tap it a little bit around it. And again, use my finger. And for leaves that are probably shadowed, I'll add a little shading. Like these that go behind the other one. And also the ones that are folding, they would probably make a natural shade. Like that. So I think the first one is done. So I'll paint the inner floral piece and I just want it to be yellow. So I'll see if this one will do. our alarm and I said if you get just a little bit stuck it doesn't really matter because it will make a little bit of shading that you actually want I do want a little more so I'll use this darker orange and just <laughs> sorry about that and just kind of uh, go through the edges This will leave it with a more realistic look. So that's the pink one and the first one. I'll take the purple. And again, I want to add some dark shades. So I'll use this really dark purple and see if that will work. And again, I'm focusing on my shadings where I think that the shades would fall naturally. And since these are going to be connected, I probably want some shades and the connecting part as well, which is here.
and it might look a little bit messy but once you get it assembled I think it usually turns out beautiful so for the inner part I want to do the same as I did on the other I'll just go a little around the inner piece smudge it a little and I know that this one will probably be darker since the leaf is folding so it's really just a matter of playing around if you think you, that you got a little bit of the paint stuck inside the scarring you could use a sharp tool or a knife or a toothpick or something like that and just kind of uh, take it out like that so now I'm just checking to see if I need more shading somewhere and I'll just make some random lines or stripes and kind of smudge them just to give it a little more natural look So that's the purple magnolia and again I want the inner piece but I probably want to make this just a tiny bit darker so instead of starting with the yellow I'll start with the orange And I'll just tap it a little and to make it a little darker in the edge I'll go with this one and just carefully touch it and I did get a little too much of the orange on my purple so I'll take my purple and hide the orange so it's pretty easy with watercolor because you can mix and blend and it's easy to go in and correct mistakes so now the purple one is done as well so this is both of them and all that's left to do is the leaves the leaves are pretty simple because they are just green I think I'll go ahead and maybe use this one it might be a little too olive but that's okay because it is too olive in my opinion but I can just add some of my green and kind of blend it in I 
And this is actually exactly the color I was heading for because it's dark, but it's not too dark. So green on this one as well. Like that. If I wanted to make it more fall-ish, I could go in and add some brown on the inner pieces, but I actually think it's still a little on the dark side, so I would take some lighter green here and use that instead. So I'm just kind of wiping on the same side as my scored lines. And on the edge of the leaf. Take my finger and wipe it off. And once you're done, you could choose to give it a coat of polycrylic or shellac or something like that to protect your watercolors. I've had pieces that didn't get any treatment afterwards and they are still looking amazing after two years. So it's not necessary and I'll probably not do it on these. But if you want, you can. But I just want to say that you need to make sure that whatever uh, clear coat you're using doesn't smudge or discolor your painting. So take a scrap piece, paint it with watercolor, try a clear coat and just see what happens. This is the finished result of my magnolias. I set there for a sign and I have a, another video. Um, separate for that one and the sampling of it. So if you want to check it out, just uh, browse through my YouTube channel or join my helping group on Facebook. It's called Laser Up with Mima Design and I hope to see you soon.